Yo, what's going on guys? Cultimers back at it with another video. This is a $700 full setup AMD gaming PC build. Now I actually kind of done goofed because this is probably the kind of budget a lot of you guys are spending on your gaming PC this holiday season. So I probably should have made this video a little while ago, but hey, better late than never. And like I said, this is a full gaming PC build, so it includes the monitor, the OS, and the keyboard and mouse have all been accounted for in the final price tally. So with that being said, let's get right into this with the CPU of the build that went with the AMD FX6300 3.5 GHz 6 core processor. Now to me, the FX6300 is kind of the jack of all trades CPU. It comes at a great price of only $90. And while it doesn't excel in anything like gaming performance, or video rendering and video editing, live stream performance, anything like that, the FX6300 for this kind of a price really does good in just about everything. It doesn't do amazing in everything. Keep in mind the price of this CPU is only $90, and this CPU can do decent gaming, it can do decent video editing and rendering, and it can actually do a little bit of live streaming. If you guys are into those kinds of things, and these days people that are buying a gaming PC really want to get into editing videos, want to live stream on Twitch, so I think for the price right now, the 6300 is a CPU that the price has been consistently going down over the last few years. It's a pretty ridiculous deal and it really works well in these budget AMD builds. And really for $90 and if you do look for sales, you can get it even less than $90. It is a very, very good deal. Moving on to the motherboard, I want the Asus M5A97LE R2O. This motherboard is about $70. There's also a mail-in rebate you can get that would knock it down to $60. Which that's the kind of price I wanted to pay for a motherboard in this build. It's a good motherboard, but you definitely don't want to be overspending on a motherboard in a build like this. Because I think in a budget end build, the motherboard is something you can save a couple bucks on and put that towards your graphics card. So this kind of motherboard is still going to get the job done. It has four memory slots up to DDR3-2133 memory and up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's got RAID support and 6 SATA 60 bit per second port, so there's actually a lot of features in this motherboard, and at this kind of a price range, it's going to fit really well in the build while it's not going to give you all the features in the world. For $60, you're going to be saving a lot of money, and you can put that towards the main part of your gaming PC, which is the GPU, which we'll cover a bit later on. For memory, you're going to pick up G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series 8GB, 24GB sticks at DDR3 1600MHz. $42 for 8GB of RAM is an absolute steal. And 8GB is a great amount to have in a gaming PC these days. The majority of games are recommending 8GB, and even with the games that do recommend 16GB, I think Star Wars Battlefront is one of the only ones. That game does run on 8GB of RAM, I myself have 8GB of RAM and I was able to play that game just fine. And considering just how cheap 8GB of RAM is, 4GB of RAM even in a budget and build is really off the table. Just get 8GB for $42, that's a ridiculous deal. And in the future if you do want to upgrade to 16GB of RAM, all you'll have to do is buy another kit of this RAM and you'll be good to go. But for for now, 8GB of RAM is the complete sweet spot in any build, really. If you're building a super budget end build, or if you're building a higher end build that's $800 to $1000, I would still get 8GB of RAM. That's such a sweet spot right now, the price is great, and you really can't go wrong with it. For storage, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB. No SSD in this build, the Caviar Blue 1TB is going to offer you a lot more storage than what you would get out of an SSD. While for $50 with an SSD, you would get 120 maybe even 240 gigabytes. These days, even 200 40 gigabytes is just not enough for gaming with games like titanfall being 60 gigabytes call of duty black ops 3 being 50 gigabytes you really do need more than 240 gigabytes for a lot of people one terabyte might not even be enough if you're recording a lot of videos keeping archives of your twitch streams or downloading a lot of movies if you've never been a pc gamer one terabyte might sound like a lot but once you start mass buying games off Steam sales, downloading movies and all this kind of stuff, it goes away really fast. But I think most people can make do with a terabyte. If not, if you need anything more than a terabyte, you can pick up one of the Seagate drives. You can get a two or three terabyte drive for 70 to $90 respectively. And if you do think you need more than a terabyte, you could go for that. Otherwise, a terabyte of Caviar Blue for $50 is a pretty good deal. Now for the video card, I went with the XFX Radeon R9 280 3GB video card. Now this GPU has been going in and out of stock. So if you want to get an R9 280, I would recommend picking it up ASAP because I do not know when it's going to go out of stock again. Right now, Amazon has this video card for $190 and best of all, there's also a $30 mail-in rebate. So that knocks the price of this GPU down to $160. For an R9 280 for $160, that's a freaking great deal. It's a 3GB video card which might be one of the best drawing factors of this GPU. 
because at this price range, the competing GPUs is like the GTX 960 or the R9 380. Both of those GPUs are two gigabyte video cards and the R9 280 is gonna give you that extra gigabyte, which for a lot of games is gonna come in really handy like Grand Theft Auto 5 and upcoming games as well. And I know GTA 5 is one of the most popular games right now. So the three gigabytes is really gonna come in handy. And for $190 and 160 after the mail-in rebate, the R9 280 is an absolute stellar deal. And like I said, if you want it, try to pick it up ASAP. And as far as gaming performance goes, you'll be doing really well at 1080p. You might not be maxing out every game and getting 60 frames per second, but games like Star Wars Battlefront, Fallout 4, Metro Last Light, all the high-end games, the R9 280 is going to run them really well at 1080p. And 1080p is the resolution you want to be playing games with this GPU. I will not be getting an R9 280 to look to do 1440p or god forbid 4K gaming. That's just not something you're going to be doing with a graphics card like this. But for 1080p gaming, you're going to get really good performance. And if you're used to console gaming being the PS4, the Xbox One, the R9 280 is going to run laps around those two. Moving on to the power supply, we went with the Seasonic 520W 80 Plus Bronze Certified Power Supply. You can get this PSU for about $50 to $60. It's a good power supply that's going to power this build no problem. You're not going to be going for a dual video card configuration since if you're at this budget, I don't think you really want to run two video cards anyway. And like I've always said, if you want more graphical performance instead of going for a dual GPU configuration, just sell your video card and buy one of a higher tier. If you're getting tired of your R9 280, sell it and buy a 390. That's what I recommend to do. So the 520 watt power supply from Seasonic is going to work great in this build, comes at a great price, and it's from a reputable manufacturer in Seasonic. And finally, for the PC components themselves, the case, it's the Cooler Master Half 912 ATX Mint Tower case. The build itself doesn't have a ridiculously cool color scheme, so with the case, I don't think you're going to want a side window. That's why I opted out of the NZXT S340. The Half 912, aesthetically, it looks great. I actually have this case myself. And while it's not the type of case that somebody's going to walk in and think it's a refrigerator, it's a good enough looking case. It offers a lot of room for upgradability, like as far as storing hard drives goes and just adding components, the Half 912 has a lot of room to work with at a really good price. It's going to keep your components cool, and at the end of the day, that's the most important part of the case. And of course, some of you guys care about aesthetics, and I think the Half 912 looks pretty good. Moving on to the monitor, I went with the Asus VS228H-P 21.5 inch monitor. So you guys might know that I myself have a 1440p monitor, but I've actually decided to go back and start gaming at 1080p again, just because at this resolution, games are easier to run, and this is actually the monitor I've been gaming at, and 1080p looks freaking awesome on this monitor. While it's not 23 inches, you can get one of those for about $15 to $20 more. I think at 21.5 inches, 1080p looks fantastic. And as far as size goes, I've gamed on a 1080p 23-inch monitor and a 21.5-inch monitor. I don't really notice a big difference. But hey, if you really want to get that extra inch and a half, you can pay that extra 20 bucks. Like I said, this is a 1920 by 1080 monitor. It's got a 5 millisecond response time, which isn't the best, but for a monitor at this price range, that's perfectly fine. It's got an HDMI port, a D sub port, and a DVI-D port. So all in all, Asus makes some great 1080p monitors. This is just one of them. If you want a 23-inch monitor, go for it. If you want to get a 144Hz monitor and spend a little bit of extra money, if you're, say, big into CSGO, go ahead and pick that up. But this one, I've been playing games like Just Cause 3 on it, Metal Gear Solid 5, Fallout 4. They've all looked fantastic. And with the R9 280 at this kind of a resolution on this monitor, the games are going to look really, really good. Moving on to the keyboard and the mouse, this is pretty much the go-to option for a budget PC. It's the Cooler Master CM Storm Devastator Gaming Bundle. It's a wired keyboard and a mouse. A lot of places have this, NCIX has this, Newegg has this, Amazon has this, and it's pretty much the go-to thing if you're looking for a cheap keyboard and mouse with a budget and build. No, it's not amazing. Yes, is a Myonix caster better? Yes, is a Corsair K70 better? Yes. But considering those two things together would cost like $150, those are kind of off the table for a budget and build. This keyboard and mouse bundle will be something to hold you over with. And in the future, if you do want to upgrade to, say, a Corsair K70, a Caster, a Razer Naga, or something like that, you can. But as far as just beginning goes, I think the CM Storm Devastator is a fine bundle. And to be honest, I started gaming on a PC without a fancy keyboard and mouse, and it wasn't that much of a difficult experience for me. I was still playing games like Battlefield 3 at the time. It's not like I was doing terrible, especially for somebody that's never PC gamed on a mechanical keyboard and a nice gaming mouse. You're really not going to be that bothered by it, and your wallet's going to be a lot happier for it. Finally, for the OS, I would recommend you to go on G2A and get like a Windows 8 key, or you can go on Reddit r slash Microsoft Software Swap. I myself actually picked up a Windows 10 key off there. Worked absolutely fine. I'm running that Windows 10 right now. 
and it's working absolutely magnificently. Otherwise, if you do want to spend the $100 on Amazon and get Windows 10 or Windows 8, you can do that as well. But those of you on a budget are probably going to find more crafty ways to get your OS at a cheaper price. I'll leave all the links in the description box down below as always. And that's going to wrap up this video. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any requests for future videos, leave them in the comment section down below. I know a lot of you guys want more of these full setup PCs. They just take a little bit more time to produce, but I will try to do them a bit more often. I'm trying to aim to do at least one or two of these full setup PCs a month. And you guys seem to be enjoying them. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.